Lopez, what's coming up on the world today? People still trapped under the rubble in Turkey in this Turkey Syria quake. They're sending voice notes to guide rescuers on how to bring them out. A global aid mobilized for those affected by the quake in Turkey and in Syria. Plus. China says a suspected spy balloon down by the U.S. is its and not the United States. A warm welcome to our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. I'm Amarachi Ubani in Lagos. It's been a long night for both rescue workers and survivors of the 7.8 magnitude earthquake in southern Turkey and in northern Syria. As they raced uh, against time to reach those trapped under the rubble. As night fell yesterday, tearful locals and anxiously sifted through the sight of a collapsed building, trying to listen for Looks signs like of life fresh. and the voices of loved ones trapped under piles of debris and rubble. As one man pointed to a dead body lying in the wreckage, the desperate screams of a woman from under the destroyed building could be heard banging metal to attract attention to where she was trapped as a man called out to her in Turkish and in Arabic. At just a few meters away, another resident cried as if pointed to the collapsed building where his mother and his father was stranded underneath awaiting emergency workers. The health minister says more than 1,200 buildings have been destroyed by the quake in Hatay province alone, with at least 520 people killed in the area. And we're learning that more than 5,000 people have been killed in the huge quake that hit Turkey and Syria. The 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck near Gaziantep in the early hours of Monday morning while people were asleep. President Recep Erdogan, in an address, called for nations to help, and they're answering. President Lisa Tayyip Erdogan's announcement came as a death toll from the earthquake rose beyond 3,000. There are fears they could rise even higher. Declaring a state of emergency permits the president and cabinet to ensure that operations are carried out rapidly, and it would end shortly before presidential and parliamentary elections are scheduled to hold on May 14th which he says could be extended. The only other time President Erdogan has declared a nationwide state of emergency was in July 2016, in the wake of a failed military coup. And though rescue services tried working through the night into the second day of the quake, there were still a few lapses while delivery of aid to those impacted by the quake has been slow and non-existent in some areas. One family in Malatya expressed their frustration after feeling abandoned by authorities. Weather conditions had worsened through the night and it snowed, leaving many freezing as they waited for help to come. Homeless and with nowhere to shelter from the harsh winter weather, their grief is compounded by the knowledge that two of your youngest members are still under the rubble. Ahmed Alinak, whose two nephews are still under the wreckage, says there's no one here, we are all doomed. This is the order we have here and we live in Turkey. Meanwhile, in Syria, rescue teams worked early on Tuesday to free people trapped under the rubble of buildings in Aleppo as residents eagerly awaited news of their loved ones. Over 1,400 people were killed in the country. Rescue efforts in the northwest has been hampered by lack of equipment and freezing conditions. Damage was also widely seen in government-held Aleppo City's eastern sector, whose buildings bore the brunt of intensive aerial bombing by Russia and the Syrian military to push out rebels in 2016. But sometimes there are instances of relief and tears of joy, like when rescuers pulled out a young boy trapped under the rubble of a collapsed building in the town of Janderis.
Let's bring in foreign affairs commentator Alex Kondur. She lives in Antalya, Turkey. Alex, thank you for joining us on the program. Three months of a state of, of uh, a state of emergency announced by President Recep Erdogan. How do you feel about that? Um, hello, good evening. Uh, thank you for bringing me in. Um, well, uh, you know, we feel terrified and shocked, uh, and I'm say I'm sending. My condolences and prayers to all the families that lost uh, their loved ones. Uh, you know, um, uh, you don't know uh, what to do in this uh, when this happens. And the natural disaster just shows uh, that uh, human, that a human is nothing uh, in the face of the natural disaster. So. Um, I am located in the place where, which is not um, that impacted by the earthquake. We, I only uh, felt a few seconds of earthquake, um, but um, in this case, you always, you always don't know what to do. And you just need to uh, pray and think that uh, it will not affect you. Yeah, and I do know that a lot of people are staying outside, especially areas where the tremors are being felt. They're staying outside for their own safety. Um, and it's cold out there, isn't it? Um, so, so how are people really coping with this? And I know that's why you're outside at the moment, because um, uh, people are quite uh, 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 unsure and uncertain what exactly to expect. Um, how, is, how is that for you? I mean, on a night like this, you'd be home. Uh, in a warm room, probably having a hot meal or something. And here you are standing outside just for your own security. Are there other people also doing the same? Correct, yes. Yeah, well, uh, as uh, the security guidance uh, says to us, we need to take the belongings, which are like passports and uh, cards, and just go away from the place which is affected by the quake. And you just need to go outside as quickly as possible. Um, that's what I uh, wanted to do if the quake would last longer than it lasted. Um, and uh, it started at 4.20 a.m. in the morning. So, um, yeah, um, you just need to be ready to, do, to know what to do in this case. I do understand, um, Alex, and I appreciate your speaking with us. But we understand there's a lot of aid coming in from across the world. Um, aid is mobilized by many countries thanks to President Erdogan's appeal uh, to countries to send in not just uh, aid, but also uh, professionals, uh, special, specialists in, in this instance. And yet we've seen locals trying to reach those under the rubble using their bare hands. Uh, they're moving away rocks and concrete. And do you think the country has at least the capacity to hold four until the more professional help arrives? Oh, uh, yeah, really. Um, the country uh, has already sent 53,000 people to uh, rescuing operations. And the country also sent uh, approximately 50,000 um, uh, tents and uh, more than 100 mattresses for people that are affected by the earthquake. And the country has also sent um, the money for the for those who uh, survived, survived uh, here, which equals uh, $5.3 billion, uh, which is in national currencies, more than 100 billion uh, liras, um, liras. Um, yeah, uh, now the country has all the capacity to um, do what it takes to save those uh, who have survived, because you know that first 72 hours are critical. Uh, and it, it must have been a rare thing for President Erdogan to call for help from these countries. I mean, these are countries who stood up to in the past, but as we see, the weather is becoming intense. Uh, it snowed last night some areas are hard to yeah. reach also because of some rebel activities there has the government announced a plan of action for those displaced by the quake um those who have lost their homes uh, at least uh, yeah. whose buildings have been affected by this um uh, the 7.8 magnitude earthquake yeah the earthquake uh, has affected the area where live more than 13 million people 
and of course it is the strongest earthquake since 1939 and even 1999. So, uh, yeah, um, the plan is also to help uh, the survivors as quickly as possible, to help as much people as possible, uh, because now um, this time uh, really means a lot for the lives of the people. Do you have family in any of the areas affected by the quake? And are you able to reach them? Um, because I know some areas are hard to reach, but what about communication lines? Are they still up? The communications are all right, yes. And I have friends also felt uh, the shakes uh, at uh, night. Uh, but they are all right, and most of them are located in Istanbul, uh, which um, had also felt the quakes and the shakes. But uh, for now, um, they are all right. But my family is uh, back in Russia, and uh, they didn't tell anything. They, uh, earthquake just affected the, um, the countries which are surrounding Turkey, like Syria, Georgia, uh, and many other Cyprus. Uh, so uh, the amount of uh, uh, people who lost their lives is uh, more than 3,000, uh, 3,500 people right now, uh, with more than 22,000 uh, suffering. Uh, and uh, that's a great shock and a great disaster to the citizens of Turkey. And I, uh, again, would like to express my sincere condolences and send in prayers to all the uh, family. Alex, how are you hoping to get through the night if y you have to be outside um, just for your own safety, um, so that you don't have rocks or concrete falling on you, uh, should there be any more tremors uh, as a result of the quake? Um, well, the geologists say that um, as it was one of the greatest uh, earthquakes since 1999, um, the energy accumulated in the place of the epicenter, which was located at a depth of 10 15 kilometers, um, it can, well, the earthquake itself, it uh, really shifted the Anatolian plate, which geologists say uh, is crucial uh, for the future possible quake. Uh, and uh, the geologists from the Italian uh, seismology, seismology Agency, they say uh, that um, there is a high possibility of the continuous uh, shake within the future weeks uh, and until the energy is um, um, released from the uh, plate, it will still be uh, the shake. So please, uh, those uh, who are in the region, you need to be careful and you need to be aware of the possible quakes and this is what I would like to a lot of uncertainty, Alex. Uh, but before you go out, I know you have to. It's freezing out there uh, in Antalya. So I do, do apologize, but appreciate you all the same. Um, no. What about provisions for survivors? Are there, are there um, special camps that you're uh, being directed to uh, where you can actually get a hot meal, perhaps, and probably get through the night until uh, tomorrow, and then you decide yeah. what to do next? Uh, there are places uh, in the place I am located, and uh, certainly in the places which are affected by the earthquake, which uh, work now 24-7 for those who uh, lost their home, They're the place where they can eat and stay. Uh, they can go and, of course, get food and stay for a certain period of time until the government resolves what to do next. Um, now, uh, all, everything is focused on finding people on the rubble of the um, of these uh, um, houses which are falling. Um, and now um, you just need to uh, be careful and just uh, try to be, be careful. Just, uh, I'm 
Alex, I appreciate you joining us tonight um, and, and the sacrifice you're making. Uh, we're praying for you, uh, you and all those affected uh, by the quake in Turkey. Thank you again and do stay safe as you get through the night. So President uh, Recep Erdogan declared a three months of uh, state of emergency in the 10 provinces worst affected by Monday's earthquake. It's killed more than 5,000 people now, the death toll rising as rescuers continue their work uh, through the night into another night because we have come to the end of another day. Uh, he said the state of emergency is to ensure rescue work can be carried out as quickly as possible in the southeast. But the president is still calling for help from countries uh, asking them to bring whatever they can uh, whether in equipment or in supplies Los Angeles County Fire Department has sent help and rescue teams to Turkey after a devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake that killed thousands of people Los Angeles County Fire Chief Anthony Marone told a news conference they are deploying a 78-member rescue team consisting of rescue specialists, firefighters, paramedics, doctors, search and rescue dogs, and structural engineers. Thank you for being here today as we prepare to deploy our 78-member uh, USA2 international rescue team. This team is highly skilled and elite in urban search and rescue and especially trained to assist in rescue efforts, especially after earthquakes like the one that just struck central or southeast Turkey. Tonight, our LA County firefighters and paramedics, also consisting of rescue specialists, physicians, canine search teams, and structural engineers, will join our counterparts of USA-1, based out of Fairfax County, Virginia. The team will be working for the United States Agency for International Development, also known as USAID. And the Russian Emergencies Ministry says that first responders have arrived at Adana Airport in southeastern Turkey. Footage shows aircraft carrying the first members of a 100-strong rescue team and a column of vehicles. Ministry advisor Daniel Martinov says a mobile hospital was among the equipment taken to the scene. Similarly, China sent a search and rescue team with equipment and supplies to southeast Turkey. It has allocated 40 million yen in emergency aid to help Turkey's relief efforts after this week's major earthquake, and China's Red Cross will give emergency aid of $200,000 each to Turkey and Syria. Meanwhile, Pakistan sent more emergency response material and rescuers to quick hit Turkey, a day after deploying its army personnel to participate in relief operations in the disaster-stricken area. A Romanian Air Force aircraft has delivered aid and rescue teams to earthquake-stricken Turkey. The cargo plane set off for Turkey on Monday with aid, medical and rescue crews, and search dogs. Speaking on the plane's return, Romania's Deputy Interior Minister, Raed Arafat, said the teams were the first European crews to reach the area hit by the quake. Iran, on the other hand, has sent humanitarian aid to help victims of the earthquake. The relief materials include medicine, tents and food. Mexican search and rescue teams have provided emergency response in the aftermath of the deadly disaster. More than 140 personnel from the Navy, Army and Red Cross boarded an Army aircraft at the Santa Lucia military air base on the outskirts of Mexico City. The aircraft is also carrying humanitarian aid and search and rescue dogs to assist in the mission. Furthermore, India dispatched second batch emergency material and equipment to Turkey, joining international efforts to provide aid a day after an earthquake of magnitude 7.8 struck central Turkey and northwest Syria.
Meanwhile, the Israeli Defense Force has prepared aid to be sent to Turkey. Colonel Golan Vak, the commanding officer for the IDF's National Rescue Unit, said there was still time to save people trapped in the rubble. Our goal is to save lives. Uh, we believe that life could be saved still in this time slot. The conditions and the circumstances are difficult. The weather is cold and the destruction is severe. As the aid was loaded into trucks, members of the IDF's National Rescue Unit boarded a plane to join the search and rescue operation. Italian rescuers arrived in Turkey with a C-130 military plane carrying search and rescue equipment to help with rescue and recovery efforts in northern Syria after a deadly earthquake hit the region. Fifty firefighters from the urban search and rescue team specialized in rescue operations among rubble landed at the Turkish airport of Adana together with rescue dogs and health personnel of the Civil Protection Agency. Welcome back. We're still following developments out of Turkey, Syria, as well as the other countries surrounding, uh, which have been affected by the 7.8 magnitude earthquake that struck on Monday. Early in the morning, while people were sleeping, uh, countries have been mobilizing aid for Syria, responding to President Recep Erdogan's call uh, for help at this time. The latest being Mexico, a city, a country prone to earthquakes itself. It's sending a group of 16 of its search and rescue dogs to Turkey. A dogs won the hearts of Mexicans when they combed through the rubble of the earthquake which hit Mexico City in and nearby regions in 2017, killing hundreds of people. Mexico has also suffered its own devastating disaster, especially in 1985, when at least 5,000 people were killed in the capital and its surroundings. I want to bring in uh, Bola Idu, a nursing student in Famagusta, Cyprus. Cyprus being one of other countries, uh, Greece, Israel, and the Palestinian territories, which experienced, uh, well, tremors of the earthquake as it struck on Monday. Bola, thank you for joining me on the program today. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Could Good afternoon to you. I know it's cold there, but could you describe to us what you felt and what you saw? Yeah, it's it happened around 3.18 a.m. I was asleep when I heard like a vibrating like through my window and my bed. So I jumped out from my bed. I ran to the city room. I was just like, my heart was panting. Like I wanted to jump through the balcony like I didn't know what was going on. What, what so did you, that what did you think was opinion. happening at that time? What did you think could have been happening? Although I didn't realize that it was an earthquake, I was thinking that maybe it's rapture, like rapture wanted to take place. That was what I felt. Wow, you can imagine something you've never felt before. Was there any information at this time um, as to what was really going on? Did you turn on the TV? Um, did you call friends and family um, and explain to them what was going on? Uh, did anyone tell you that there was this huge earthquake going on in, in Turkey? You're feeling it miles away from you know the epicenter of the quake itself. Yes, I went downstairs to see what is going on. So I met a lot of people, African students from different country downstairs. Like everybody was outside. The before I realized that it was an earthquake, and when we when it was in the morning, we saw the news that Turkey, like everywhere, like. Buildings are collapsing in Turkey. We only felt it in Cyprus. It's it's happened in in Turkey. Yeah, and and were there any damages, uh, especially to Famagusta where you are? Did did you are there no. cracked buildings? Everything still okay? No, no, everything is okay in Cyprus. It's only happened in Turkey and Syria. 
So what then did you do? Um, were you told what steps to take next, um, perhaps to be outside while the tremors were going on or to find safety? Okay, they only told us to be very careful that we should be safe. And um, my school, we are supposed to resume school on the 13th of February. They postponed the res resumption date to 28th of February. Is this because and of the earthquake think, or, or, or this is just, um, uh, why, why, why was yeah. it postponed? Because, because of, the, of the earthquake. Oh, okay. Yeah, because of the earthquake. And I heard that um, Turkish president um, um, Erdogan declared a three month emergency state, state of emergency for three months in 10 provinces. Will that affect you and your, your, the other students who are there studying with you at Near no, East University no. and across Cyprus? No, only in Turkey. So, Bola, what are you doing in the meantime, you know, as you await further instructions, um, either from the Cyprus government or from, you know, as you listen to developments coming out of Turkey and in Syria? Uh, nothing. Like, it's only like anything that affects Turkey, it will, it will also affect Cyprus because it's one government that is ruling um, Turkey and Cyprus. So anything that they say in Turkey, it will also affect us in Cyprus. So if they if they declare a um, public holiday for everyone, like if the order come from Turkey, that means we also will be affected. And I'm just wondering, um, there is a Nigerian mission, I believe, in Cyprus. Have you reached out to them or have they advised you on what other steps to take, um, you know, as you await um, possible tremors, uh, as we've been told, uh, could, that could possibly happen uh, after the earthquake? No, no, no. Thank you again, Bola. Um, we do hope that you and the others are safe, especially at this time. Thank you. Well, other world leaders have been reacting to uh, the earthquake in Turkey. President uh, Joseph Biden, or Joe Biden, as is popularly called, uh, the U.S. president did put a telephone call through to President Recep Erdogan, reaffirming America's readiness to provide any and all needed assistance to Turkey to recover from the devastating earthquakes. The statement from the White House says, President Biden expressed condolences on behalf of the American people to those who were injured or lost loved ones in the earthquake. The president noted that U.S. teams are deploying quickly to support Turkish search and rescue efforts and coordinate other assistance that may be required by people affected by the earthquakes, including health services or basic relief items. In Syria, since the early today, our deepest condolences are with those who have lost loved ones in the devastating earthquakes that have thus far claimed thousands of lives and caused massive destruction in Turkey and Syria. The president authorized an immediate U.S. response in addition to the U.S. personnel currently on the ground. We are in the process of deploying additional teams to support Turkish search and rescue efforts and address the needs of those injured and displaced by the earthquakes. U.S. supported human Humanitarian partners are also responding to the destruction in Syria. Since the earliest reports of an earthquake last night, Americans officials have been working closely with our NATO ally Turkey. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan reached out to his counterpart last night. Secretary Austin spoke and Secretary Blinken have both spoken with their counterparts today. USAID is also coordinating with their Turkish counterparts on traditional assistance. I just wanted to let you know, we just found out that we anticipate the president uh, and uh, President Erdogan uh, will have an opportunity to speak very soon and we will certainly have a readout when that conversation occurs. Of course, our conversation already happened. But Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was also on the phone with his Turkish counterpart, Mevlut Kavsuzoglu. At the State Department spokesperson, Ned Price told reporters the U.S. is looking at additional funding resources available to respond to the earthquake on both sides of the border.
was discussed. The Department of State is in close contact with our Turkish allies and our humanitarian partners, and our initial assistance response is already underway. We are determined to provide any and all assistance to help those affected by these earthquakes. Secretary Blinken just got off the phone with his counterpart, Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu of Turkey, to reiterate the same message. And we stand in solidarity with our allies, our partners, and the people of Turkey and Syria affected by these terrible events. Uh, we uh, are determined to do what we can to address the humanitarian needs of the Syrian people. We've done that over the course of the 12-year civil war to the tune of billions of dollars. We do that through a different process. In Turkey, we have a partner in the government. Uh, in Syria, we have a partner in the form of NGOs on the ground who are providing humanitarian support. Anything Turkey needed that we could provide, they should pick up the phone and let us know. Uh, we stand ready, as an ally should, uh, to help our ally in a time of need. Similarly, when it comes to the people of Syria, uh, we stand ready as a partner uh, and oftentimes a leading funding partner to the NGOs that are on the ground uh, inside of Syria uh, to be a partner to them in their efforts to alleviate the suffering of the Syrian people. The Australian and New Zealand governments have pledged to provide humanitarian aid to the earthquake-stricken regions during a joint conference in Canberra. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said Australia will provide an initial 10 million Australian dollars in humanitarian efforts. And New Zealand's Prime Minister Chris Hipkins said New Zealand will provide 1.5 million New Zealand dollars in aid. And I... Uh, extend Australia's deepest sympathies and condolences to the families and communities that have lost loved ones. We have seen thousands of deaths and tens of thousands of injuries through this tragedy. These multiple earthquakes that have hit the region are having a devastating impact. And today I can announce that the Australian Government will provide an initial $10 million in humanitarian assistance to those affected uh, through our Red Cross and, and Red Crescent partners and through humanitarian agencies. Chris? Thank you. Can I just echo those sentiments and add to that the, um, the condolences from the people of New Zealand to those in uh, Turkey and in Syria. Um, we, we know a little bit about earthquakes in New Zealand and the significant effect that that can have on people. Um, so our hearts are with them. Um, New Zealand will also be contributing to the international effort. Uh, we have uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in New Zealand will release details of the $1.5 million that we'll also be contributing. Uh, we should be releasing that very shortly. Um, but in the meantime, can I just add uh, as well the thoughts uh, of the people of New Zealand. Welcome back. China says a suspected spy balloon shot down by a United States fighter jet belongs to China and not the United States. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning says Beijing will continue to defend its legitimate rights and interests. The U.S. Coast Guard imposed a temporary security zone in waters of South Carolina during the military search for debris from the balloon. U.S. officials have played down the balloon's impact on national security but say a successful recovery could give the United States instant Insight into China's spying capabilities. However, Beijing condemned the shooting down of the balloon as an obvious overreaction. It called on Washington to show restraint. Well, some analysts believe that both Beijing and Washington will benefit by stabilizing their diplomatic relations and preventing the balloon incident from spiraling out of control. One of them is senior research fellow at Nos Li Kuan Yeo School of Public Policy, Drew Thompson. He says a balloon flying over the U.S. was a grossest violation of sovereignty by China and called it a very significant incident. This is a very significant incident. Um, it was the grossest violation of sovereignty by China uh, of another country uh, that I'm aware of uh, in decades. Uh, this uh, was not just a subtle miscalculation or an accident. Uh, as the Chinese Foreign Ministry has claimed. Uh, th this was the uh, deployment of an aircraft in another country's sovereign airspace without permission. Um, if this uh, same incident were to happen in China, uh, they would be uh, apoplectic over it. Well, I'm not sure how you, how you define China's foreign policy at this point. It seems rather laden with contradiction. Uh, at the same time that it's seeking stability and, uh, and, and encouraging dialogue uh, 
uh, it's simultaneously engaging in, in great provocations against other nations. So uh, I, I think there's, there's some contradictions in Beijing that will need to be resolved before we can uh, really determine the way ahead for U.S. diplomatic efforts. I think there's a number of objectives uh, for that high-level engagement, both to stabilize it, to prevent crises such as this one from escalating out of control, and that's both through dialogue, but also managing uh, the political situation in both China and the U.S., uh, but more importantly, I think Xi Jinping would like to come to the United States in the fall um, and uh, having a series of high level meetings in advance of that would make his trip much more productive uh, and successful from from his perspective. So uh, so so the, the Blinken visit postponement is unfortunate, but uh, I'm confident that it will be rescheduled and diplomacy will get back on track. And medics across the United Kingdom have staged new rounds of strikes calling for pay raises in line with the country's soaring rate of inflation. In front of a hospital in central London, nurses and ambulance workers at the Royal College of Nursing wave placards and shout slogans while encouraging passing cars to honk their support for wage increases across the medical system. The UK's Health Secretary Steve Barclay said he's held constructive talks with the unions while urging health workers to call off their planned strikes. But many of those disgruntled workers taking part in the strike continue to highlight the huge burden they and their colleagues have faced amid a severe cost of living crisis. The reason why we're protesting today is the fact that we're not paid enough and we don't really have any respect from our government. Mm. And basically we want to show people that we've, we've worked through the whole of COVID mm. and we want the respect that we deserve, really. Mm. So the average income is well below the national living wage. Mm. And every, every month I have colleagues happen to go to food banks to feed their families. <laughs> as we end the program, get your virtual reality glasses ready as we take you to meet a Nigerian artist who's using artificial intelligence to reimagine life for African elderly people. It does this by showcasing their near real life pictures and videos of them walking down the fashion ramp and on the beach. You have to see this. White-haired men and women strut down the catwalk in the latest fashion, but it is not real life. These hyper-realistic images have been created using artificial intelligence by Nigerian artists. That was the same day that the prophecy was meant to come to pass, the prophecy that nobody took serious. Malika Febwa, who is also a filmmaker, said because many elderly people were marginalized in society, especially in the fashion world, he began to imagine how they would look if they were models. But the other series came from me trying to showcase the elderly people in a different way that you don't normally see them. You know, because I feel they're marginalized. I feel like people don't talk about them, you know, in the community or anything. So I wanted to see them in a different space. And what inspired that was my personal relationship with my mom as well. So I wanted to see, you know, always, you know, imagine the elderly people in a place that is not um, either in, in a sad space or in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a suppressed state. Afebwa started posting some of his work on social media and it went viral. Good to go, good to go. He came up with Elder's series, a catalogue of pictures and videos showing white-haired women and bearded men strutting the runway for a virtual fashion show in Afrocentric attire including ornamental neck and arm bands. So I never thought I was going to go this viral. I just thought my friends would like it. My friends and my friends would like it. I normally do, but I never thought it would go this far. However, when I was making it, I kind of knew there was something there. Because while I was, when I was creating it, I was, I was enjoying the images. I was like, wow, this is dope. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Afegba was not always an artist. He started business in university, but stepped into the world of filming after a friend bought him a camera in 2011. The history speaks a lot for us that we need to learn from to know where we're going to. So why don't we tap into that? You know, so that love for that, um, to, to find out more about them, is always me trying to tap into that space. So for me trying to tap into that space already, I like to explore in terms of what are they missing out on, what's going on in society, and how can they be inclusive. 
He said the idea to explore a different world for old people came when his elderly mother fell ill. Using an artificial intelligence app, he started creating content showing a brighter side of old age. That's just simply heartwarming. Thanks for watching the program today. I'm Amarachi Ubani.